Richard was uh, an amazing human being. He was kind, he was decent, he was smart. He actually lived an exemplary life. Even when he was in treatment and he wasn't feeling well and he was an extraordinary fighter, I'd call and I'd say, you know, I, I don't want to bother you, Richard. And he said, bother me? I want you to call. It's what keeps me going. The Institute keeps me going. Just an extraordinary person in so many levels. He was always fun to be around. He was always just a, a great friend to have. He was always humble about his ideas. And he was just the kind of person you'd want to associate with. Richard Abramson had it all. That's the one thing that we have to understand. Here was a young man who went to the Air Force Academy as a Jew. He broke swimming records at the Air Force Academy. He was really quite special. Richard Abramson was an inspiration to all of us at the Air Force Academy. He was a classmate of mine in the Blackjack Squadron, and all of us in Blackjack really hold Richard, or Abe, as affectionately known by us, in high esteem. He lived by the core values of the Air Force Academy, which were integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do, and combine that with our honor code is what sustained him to be very successful as he left the military and went into the corporate world. Throughout his life, Richard was committed to his country and to the values it represented. That applied as much to his years in the Air Force as it did his leadership of the Washington Institute and to all the wonderful causes into which he poured his heart and soul. Well, Richard had this idea that it was important that young military officers understand the Holocaust and understand the role of the German military. So he sponsored this program where we bring four cadets from West Point, the Naval Academy, and the Air Force Academy who go over in June. And they study they study the Holocaust, they study the, the role of the German military in the Holocaust. When it comes to something he really cares about, there's nothing he won't do, no challenge he won't take, no amount of miles he won't swim or rack up flying, no hardship he won't endure. Richard and Lorraine's marriage was a storybook tale. I mean, Richard uh, worshipped Lorraine and Lorraine worship Richard. You know, they were completely devoted to each other. And, you know, Lorraine, of course, is uh, a person of great accomplishment in her own right. They were partners. But I could talk about, you know, technology and the use of technology and things that he saw that the Institute had to grow and, and, and do better in. But his true lasting legacy to the Institute was creating an Institute family and really believing in the power of that family. Abe was uh, very proud of his association with the Washington Institute. It meant a lot to him. And the analysis that came out was something that he always shared with me. One of Richard's finest qualities as a leader is optimism. The idea that a mix of smarts, moxie, and a little bit of faith will make sure that tomorrow is better than today. Now, Richard's good friend and mentor, Roger Hertog, is credited with teaching him this Talmudic parable. The king told the young man to look at the ring when times were especially good and when times were especially bad. Engraved on the ring was the statement, this too shall pass. Now's the time to keep this prophecy in mind. After all, we're told that the greatest opportunities arise just when things look worse. So right now, if you keep on plowing ahead, with God's help, current conditions in the Middle East will give to better times. This too shall pass, said Richard. Sadly, now Richard has passed. And with him has gone our leader, our mentor, our dear friend. What Richard left behind is an institution, a community, a family that is stronger and more cohesive than ever before. Our mission now is to pursue the legacy, to meet our goal to make America an effective change agent for peace and security throughout the Middle East.